what really, I mean, so much of what you said, but what I really loved is the sentence you said about um, don't go out, don't go looking for validation because you said it's always an inside job. That's such a well, cool it is. way to say it. Like, because yeah. I mean, the thing, the yeah. thing is, is that our, our job is um, there's the job which, you know, where you get to actually, you know, play the role and interact and engage with people. There's that job, and then there's getting the job. Mm. There are two different things, and it, um, getting the job is going to take as much energy until you start, you know, getting, you know, things start getting, you get cast, you start getting, you know, a resume of things to do, and, you know, who, who, you know, who knows where your career can go. That becomes a little bit of a different thing. But... Um, there's always a hustle. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're just starting out, or you can greenlight movies. There's always there's always oddly a hustle that's always going on in terms of people wanting roles or trying to work with people or film projects or whatever it is. So it it just you know it it doesn't really matter where you are in the process. There, it's always a there's always a kind of hustle, but it's just on different levels, you know. Um, that's such a great thing to say because I think we all think, oh, if I could just get to this place, then I can relax. Then I can. You know, Some, then there's, there is a little bit. There yeah. is, a, you know, at certain points you, you do, you can a little bit, but you're, you're, you still have to sort of hustle. And, and our industry is, is, there's no security in it. We're constantly interviewing for a job, whereas most of the world, you know, they, they interview for a job, they get a job, and they're in it for however many years or whatever it is. But we're, once our, you know, a job, unless you're a series regu regular on a show that goes on for 15 years, which is not usual, um, it happens, but it doesn't usual, you're, you, you can't look outside of yourself for safety or security. You're not going to find it. If you want it in this, if you want those things, um, outside of yourself, this is wrong, the wrong industry to be in. You have to look at faith, security, trust, faith. It's all inside. It's all in an, it's all an interior ride. And you have to trust that you um, develop your instincts, trust your gut. If you feel um, those are important tools in terms of for anything in your life, aside from like work and jobs with people, it's just listen to that. that that's one thing we as artists have when we're training is to, de to develop our instincts and to develop that gut voice. Listen to it. It knows what it's telling you in terms of what's good for you. It doesn't mean what it says for you is good for me. It's good for you and it's going to help keep you safe and keep guide you, guiding you in how to navigate. If you get a hit about someone like, uh, this doesn't feel right. I don't. I don't. This isn't. I don't want to do this audition. Don't. Don't do it. There's. It's telling you something. Our instincts are very developed that way because we're trained to do that. Most people don't unless they kind of go into therapy or decide to do workshops or seekers. But that's a, a side benefit of our training that we get. Listen to it. 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 It, it will. It really will help you. It'll protect you. Um, so, much, so many of us, when we're beginning, especially starting out, we have so much anxiety yeah. about, and, and we think, well, we have to do this, or, or I got to do this, or if I don't do this, then this isn't going to happen, and, mm -hmm. and we yeah. often override our instincts that, that say, Pretty don't much, do don't, that. don't ever, if, when, when you're afraid, or that negative voice kind of kick, kicks in, because we all got that, that negative cri critical voice that tends to at attack us. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to it and never believe it because it's not true. It's not true. Your fears are not based in any reality. Mm -hmm. If you track the fear and you go to where it's going, if you really go all the way to it, it's not true. Don't listen to it. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. Please keep going. I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> no, I don't want just, to interrupt. It's just that, that <laughs> so everything, everything you need and you have, and that's part of the process, and in terms of being able to navigate in this industry, and it's a brutal industry, you'll meet some amazing people. And you probably have already met them right now in this room if you're working with and training them. It's, it's an industry of relationships. So it's keep them, do you know, and you find people that you connect with and you... Um, um, 
You, you find people that you like to work, you s have similar visions of, of the kinds of things you want to create, the stories you want to tell, the projects that you want to do. Um, it's, you guys are going to be the next, you know, Meryl Streep's and, and De Niro's and, you know, you, you're, it's all possible right there. So it's, 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 it's all about relationships. So develop the ones that you have around you trust, and then you know it's, as you go into the industry, um, uh, the I mean this is going to sound really crazy, but um, have manners. Mm. <laughs> have manners in the sense that it's 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 actually simple, and it has, um, um, and I've had a, had a couple of experiences where as a result of of that why why. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, but the, base, the basic manners are you say please and thank you. And if someone does a favor for you, you absolutely have to say thank you. If that, um, if that person um, helped you get an audition, you know, you do a little, you know, depending on what they do for you, how they help you in some way. Because in this industry, and for us as we're moving, no matter where you are in it, it's about helping and being helped. So if somebody helps you, as I said, you say thank you. If they help you get a job, you send them flowers. You know, they get you a, a role on a, as a series regular, you buy them something really nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, and that makes a difference. Because when people make an effort for you and you acknowledge it, they don't forget you. There's a lot of unkindness. There's a lot of abuse that can be in the industry. And you'll see it. You'll meet it. We all, we all go through it. But, um, and it's just there because we're human beings and there's various levels of dysfunction and people find, trying to find their way and some are really assholes and, sorry, and some, you know, some are really lovely, you know, lovely people. So if you are kind and you actually say please and thank you, you're remembered. You really are. I mean, it's so, it's, it's always fascinating to me, like when I, with, with certain crews or other actors, that when I've just said thank you or please, they remember me, they're more, um, they're more open to me. If I need to ask a favor, you know, and I try not to be too um, burdensome in certain ways, they're willing to do it. The, the, the very nature of film and television is kind of an addictive dynamic. It's really dysfunctional. You know, you go on a set for two months, three months, and all life is supposed to stop. Nowhere else in the world does a job ever do that, do you know? So, and you're forced into these relationships and intimacies with people that you may not ever actually choose yourself in your day-to-day -day life, but yet you're, you're, you're in this dynamic. So it's very intense, you know, it can be. So if you're, if you're kind and you say thank you and you're working 17-hour days, you know, and the crew is only getting like maybe five hours, you know, you make the effort to, instead of just like leaving your clothes on the trailer floor, you actually pick them up, put them on the, even though it's four in the morning, and you put them on the, the, um, the, the hangers, and you put the shoes there, and you take that stuff so that the costume people can then just quickly move in and take it out. It means a lot. It's, uh, those little things can really have an impact. If you're aware of what other people's jobs are and what they're doing, and that you make an effort to help them in that way. They don't forget you, you know, they, it, it, it really, and, but that's also nice in terms of just being human beings, you know, but it, it does make a difference. Harold Ramis, do you, do you know, you know who Harold Ramis is, the director? He did um, Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters. Uh, he did Groundhog Day. Um, he worked with Bill Murray and a lot of um, the sort of comedians. And um, I, I did a film with him and Michael Keaton and Andy McDowell. And you know, he was saying, um, we were talking in what's called Video Village, usually, which is you know, you've got the monitors and the director's there and the script supervisor and the producers and whoever else. And they're watching the you know, they're watching the takes. So I was, we were waiting in between setups and, you know, he, we were just talking about, um, uh, you know, the set and I was saying, it's just so lovely here and everybody's so nice and competent and that's not always the case. He goes, well, I just don't, you know, if I'm gonna be working with these people for, you know, over a year, you know, I wanna like them. Mm -hmm. 
You know, they need, they don't have to personally like them and want to invite them over to your house for dinner all the time, but you want to have that professionalism, which is, you know, you, you show up, you know your lines, you know what you're doing, you're willing to work and collaborate. Um, you say, you know, you do say sort of please and thank you, as I said. I mean, that's, you know, kind of um, keeping it simple, but um, uh, gets to the sort of the heart of it in terms of the treatment of people. Those things make a difference. People will remember you if you do that. And if you consistently do it, you then begin to have a reputation because as much as we don't like it, there's gossip. Mm -hmm. People talk. We do it among ourselves all the time. Yeah. So you, the only thing you can control, because you can't control anybody's, anybody else's thoughts or feelings about you, what they think or, or don't, and frankly, it's none of your business anyway, but it's, it's really, um, uh, that's what you can control, is how you interact with people and how you treat them and how you behave and how you allow yourself to be treated in that way. So you don't have to be a doormat. I'm certainly not saying that. Don't let people run over you. You shouldn't. Um, but it's, it's really, it, uh, that has a big thing. That's how you can kind of control your own um, whatever is going to be said or not about you in terms of how, how people, oh yeah, she's, she's lovely to work with, she's great, she's really nice, you know, and she's good, she's gotta, you know, she picks her battles, you know, when she really needs to push a, push a point, then, you know, she does it, but otherwise she's willing to see other points of views or how you do it or work it or problem solve, you know, that kind of thing. I love that. Yeah. Me too. It's like creating the energy around you. Yeah, on I mean, set, yeah. you know, making and just sure being a decent yeah. human being, kindness. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really ugly out there now. You know that. I mean, what's going on in this country? It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. The level of corruption and the craziness and this whole this whole divisive way of moving. There's so much that we can't control in our lives. But what we can is how we think and feel and how we choose to respond to things. So, and how you choose to interact and treat other people, it really makes a difference. It can have an impact more than you know. And a lot of times you can, there are millions of way, reasons how, why people get jobs. Sometimes it's literally, and I've had all the experiences. I've had from literally walking in, uh, auditioning, and getting the job without them ever having known me before. And then I've gotten jobs because I had, um, uh, I had done one job I, I, I ended up getting, I was hired because I had worked with this other director and one on the first show I had done where I had worked with her, um, one of the actors was, an, um, was a recovering alcoholic and had, had fallen off the wagon. So there was a lot of tension and a lot of um, strange dynamics going on. But I was able to kind of navigate it and do it, and it ended up sort of working. So, sh and I just did my job. I showed up. I took, you know, I engaged with people the way I did. I didn't get involved in anybody's business that I wasn't supposed to or deal with. And so um, I said, please and thank you. And so um, the, the, she was working on another show. And there was a similar situation where another one of the actresses had fallen off the wagon. And so I ended up, as a result of how I behaved on that job before, I got this one. And they just offered it to me. Oh, because wow. she, she had worked with me before. She knew what, we had a good relationship. I was able to navigate that sort of stuff. Now, I, I mean, I haven't had that thing different again. And there, there was that, a very specific dynamic going on. But she hired me again because of um, my ability to navigate a kind of dicey dynamic and that I just showed up and I was professional and I did my job and you know I you know wasn't a you know negative or doing misery loves company or that sort of right. stuff so God, you just never know right you just never know you don't I mean it's 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 a it's fantastic. There's so many crazy adventures you're going to go on, mm -hmm. and some of them are just, you can't believe you get to do it. And then there's others you're going, oh my God, what, yeah. what is happening here? You know. So sadly, we are getting the cue that we're out okay. of time, but I just, I have to tell you guys two things, which is, first of all, which I should have said before, just that Anne is doing this for no 
pay and out of the goodness of her heart for being here. So thank you so much yeah, for that. Um, yeah, really. Um, <laughs> and secondly, that when we were backstage before we came out, um, that you said to us, I'm not sure I really have much to say. <laughs> and like, you have been the easiest guest to interview because oh, you have really? so many brilliant, I mean, I feel like I want to go home and write oh, down God. everything. No, it's fantastic. No. Are you kidding? <laughs> You've been amazing. Thank you. Um, so thank you. You're really, welcome. I've learned so much tonight. Um, we always like to end with um, what we call an LAism, um, because our podcast is uh, about acting, but also about LA, uh -huh. um, which is just a question that we ask, which is, is there anything about LA that you have noticed that is unique to only LA? Well, as um, Betty Davis said, mm. whenever possible, take fountain. <laughs> <laughs> It's and she's true. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's still good advice. It's still good day. advice. Whenever possible, take fountain. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, she didn't have to end. I know, me it's too. So nice. Oh, to well, listen. thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you so, so much. So thank you for so being wonderful. here. It was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh.